there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Happy Easter. Today we have a mixed media bunny to share and we are going to just do a little painting here. I'm using a scrap of watercolor paper and I'm just taping it down to a uh, little piece of cardboard. Now this would be perfect for a greeting card if you want to maybe make a spring greeting card for somebody. And I'm starting off with just a pencil and I'm sketching on a bunny. Now you can find bunny reference photos um, all over the internet, but I will try to remember to link up the one that I used. I believe it was from either Unsplash or Pixabay. You just basically want to get the basic shape in there and you want to make sure your lines are dark enough to see when you start your painting process. Now this is one of the first paintings I did to test out this cute little watercolor set from Artsy. It's um, very similar to the fan palettes that were popular, oh, I would say a couple summers ago. Uh, it's just a different style, and boy, oh boy, do I love a novelty palette. Now, whenever you have one of these strange palettes like this, or the fold-out ones, or the fan ones, I really recommend you make a color swatch. Now, the paints in these palettes aren't half bad. They're all very, very similar. So, lots of these palettes are out. They either fold or they fan out. They're... Um, they're cute, they're fun, great, actually great Easter basket stuffers. Um, it's kind of late for that though. Um, but the paint quality is actually pretty good. And one of the ways you can tell how good a paint is going to be is how it looks in the pan. If the paints look really dark in the pan, they're generally more transparent and a better quality. And that's what we have here. When your paints look really bright, like pieces of candy in the watercolor palette, that means there could be opacity to the paints, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, or it could have optical brighteners in it. Um, so if you have nice, like really, really dark pans like this, it's a good sign. But you do need to make a swatch, otherwise you're gonna not know what the heck you have when you start to uh, to dip your paintbrush in. I started off by um, adding in a background. I wanted to think like uh, maybe like grass with some clover, that sort of thing. I just wanted my bunny to be in a nice lush little field, I guess. And with the back of my aquarelle brush, I am scraping in some grasses into the wet paint. Now, if you do that on wet paint, on wet paper, it's going to actually scar the paper and give you those really nice uh, fine grasses. Now, if you have any of those brushes that have clear handles, they generally have a beveled end and that's what that beveled end is for. If you don't, then take an old gift card or an old credit card, cut it up, and you can use those edges to make your scraping marks. Now the background's dry and we're going to start on our cute fluffy little bunny. And I am going ahead and wetting the bunny with just clear water. And I don't remember what kind of paper I'm using here. I, I know it's watercolor paper, but I don't know if it's if it's expensive, if it's cheap, or, or what it is exactly. Um, but anyway, I wet it and I'm adding in some different shades of brown. Now the bunny was kind of, if I'm recalling, now I painted this a couple months ago when, <laughs> now that I'm doing the tutorial. Um, it was a, a white bunny that had some brown splotches on it. So I'm using some different shades of brown to just kind of add in those uh, splotches. Now, because I was going on wet paper there, or I wet the rabbit rather, before I started painting, I know I'm going to get some soft edges, and that's what I'm going for. I also try to get some of the sh shadows in on right off the bat, so um, I don't have to be so precious about it. I feel like once I get those darks in, I'm a mu I'm much braver about painting the rest of it. So that's what I'm doing here. And as the paper starts to dry, you can start to get more lines retained from your brush strokes. So you can get more of those hairs, you can get more clumps of fur, uh, that sort of thing as your paper starts to dry. So just kind of keep that in mind. It's not like a race, it's not a race against time or anything, but as your paper dries, you can get more definition in your stroke, basically. And just painting whatever you're interested in at the moment is a great way to practice and get used to how your paint behaves. Now when I'm going in to do something like the eye here, I want that paper dry because if the paper's not dry, I'm going to have a blurry mess. So just keep in mind, if you want it to flow, if you want soft edges, you want your paper wet. If you want to have crisp details, you want your paper dry. As long as you can remember that, that's like, that's like you know, I think 80% of watercolor painting is knowing whether your paper should be wet or dry and uh, how much water to add to your paint. But there's really, there's no way to learn it without practicing. So you know, so practice. Don't be afraid of wasting your supplies. If you're really afraid of wasting supplies, consider buying less expensive supplies. Um, I know a lot of people say never work with anything less than the best, but if you're too afraid to use it, if you bought the best and you're afraid to use it, it's not helping you one single bit. Now, to be honest, I wasn't really that thrilled with my painting, so I thought, well, why don't I play with some other supplies? And I got out my Paul Rubens oil pastels. These are something they've been on deck to review. I've done a couple pictures with them, but um, I haven't done that much with them, but I really like them. I think they're a nice high quality oil pastel and they're surprisingly affordable. It's like $25 for, I believe it's a set 
of 48. Um, maybe there's more in there. I'm thinking it's 48. Great selection of colors. You get a couple whites. Um, they're very blendable. They work really well in a variety of papers. I have no qualms with them. Now that said, I do not do these beautiful pastels any justice with this picture. I found myself getting very frustrated and I kind of wished I had quit at the watercolor uh, portion or maybe even just quit right after I added some white highlights with the oil pastel because I definitely found myself struggling especially with a small picture like this with the with the pastels because they're kind of they're kind of big big and chunky and for me personally I like to use pastels on larger pieces of paper and so I just completely felt like I was you know like a bull in a china closet the whole time that I was using the pastels here now you can go in with some color pencil and add some more detail and oh kind of even scrape in into the oil pastels to get a little bit of, of definition. So don't be afraid to mix your media. If you're frustrated, if a painting's not coming out, um, try something else on top. Now, there is something you wanna keep in mind if you're doing mixed media work, and that is the fat over lean rule. And generally, that's only applied to oil painting. However, it does also apply to mixed media. And what fat over lean means, basically, is that you're gonna put those thicker um, medias on top of the, or the fatter medias over the thinner medias. So watercolor would be a very thin media. That goes down in a very thin veil of color. Some of it will absorb into the surface. It's gonna dry quickly and you can layer on top without peeling any of that off. So it's a very um, it's a very good base layer material. When you're looking at something like um, oil pastels, that's very thick, it's very smushy, it doesn't really dry. That should be one of your last medias because you can't put much stuff over oil pastels. I mean, you can scrape over it like with a pencil like I was showing you, but that's almost scraping the oil pastel off as much as it is putting color on. So if you were going to do this in order, you do your watercolor and then you could do color pencil and then your oil pastel would be your finding detail unless your uh, mission is to scrape some back. Now, I was able to get a little more contrast by going in with the oil pastel and adding some shadow under the <laughs> under the bunny. I've got to tell you what is going on in real life here. My cat is trying to get outside and she's like gone up between the, the blinds and the glass door. She's like trying to get herself out. She's been on the wrong side of the door all day, but I didn't know if the microphone was picking that up and I was starting to laugh because she's acting like a, a fool over there. Um, but yeah, anyway, you just want to kind of keep that in mind as you're building your creation. And I'm taking the tape off so we can see our finished painting, and I think it's all right. Definitely after a couple weeks of uh, time, I like the picture a little bit better. And I did decide I needed to adjust my darks on the bunny, so I went in with a brown oil pastel and just added a few more touches. Sometimes taking the tape off your paper, if you choose to, to, to tape it down, or maybe you have a white mat just cut to a normal size that you usually use that you can lay over your painting when it's done to see how it looks, just seeing that border can really um, tell you whether it's done or not, or it can tell you, gee, you know, you really need to add a little more contrast, or you need to do this, or you need to do that. Having that kind of white space for your eye to rest, you're my cat. She says hello. She says happy Easter. Now let me outside. <laughs> I got bunnies to chase. Um, uh, just by having that little white area to rest your eye can really um, help you see it with a fresh perspective and let you know what you need to add. But anyway, there you have it. I hope you have a wonderful Easter with your family. And uh, until next time, happy crafting. <laughs>